I had already kind of given my notice to uh, Charlie and uh, Bill Emerson and Bill Yates at the time and said, you know, I just want to try something else. And they said, go ahead. You know, yeah, you know, we know we don't want to hold you back. So uh, that's when we formed the second generation, and that for me was kind of short lived, just barely over a year. Because yes, I did have some artistic freedom, but um, some of the material that uh, Eddie and uh, Wendy Thatcher, his uh, girlfriend at the time, and lead singer for second generation, she was picking out some stuff too, and by the end of that first year, I didn't like the direction that the, the group was headed material-wise, uh, and the fact that we were traveling too far for too little, to put it bluntly, you know. So, you know, we got a gig in uh, Kentucky, and it pays, uh, you know, $200 or something like that, and wow, wow. Are you kidding? We're driving all the way out there for, well, yeah. And actually, we we were doing so many gigs out in that part of the country that we relocated. The band picked up and relocated to Columbus, Ohio. And that didn't set well with me either. I mean, I, I adapted to it barely, but uh, I didn't want to spend, you know, too many years uh, out there and was looking for an opportunity to get I, I liked the DC area one day the day came when I just told Eddie I said look I I don't like the direction this band is going and I'm going to try something on my own and he said go for it you know he says if you you know want to do something else so I recruited uh, Keith Whitley and at the time Carl Jackson on banjo I was still living in Columbus, and I recruited my old buddy Bill Rawlings, who by the time he resurfaced in music, he was the uh, original guitar player in uh, Fred Pike, Bill Rawlings, and the Twin River Boys, but when he came down to D.C., he had the opportunity to uh, play bass with uh, one of his heroes, Buzz Busby, and Leon Morris, they needed a bass player. And I, I said, they're looking for a bass player. And he said, well, I'll just learn how to play bass. So he learned how to play bass. And uh, I recruited him out of D.C. to come out and uh, play some of the first licks and gigs with us around the Columbus area. And uh, strangely or ironically what happened uh, the Columbus or Ohio State Fair, it was, took place in northern part of uh, Columbus. And Carl said, well, Keith and I are going out there tonight, and uh, I want to see uh, Glenn Campbell play. Uh, and one of his banjo player is one of my heroes. He says, I, I really want to, you know, go out and, and, and listen to him. And, and I, you know, kind of balked that. I, I said, you know, I, w I had other plans or something that, Anyway, it was nice to kind of get those guys out of the house for a while. And I said, you know, go, go have a good time. Anyway, they came back that night, and I said, oh, how was the show? And they said, uh, oh, it was great. Uh, Glenn Campbell, of course, was great. And uh, Keith, you know, decided, he said, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. And so they were both staying with me at the time. And, uh, went off to their uh, respective, or uh, Keith did, and Carl said, uh, I got something to tell you. And I said, okay, what, what's up? He says, I got talking with Larry McNeely. He, he saw me, you know, uh, as they were leaving stage, and he motioned me over, and he said, hey, Carl, how you doing? It's good to see you. And uh, he said, yeah, I really enjoyed your banjo playing. He said, well, I got to tell you something. I'm leaving. Soon, I've, I've given Glenn my notice, and he's in the market for a good, really good banjo player, and I think you might fill the bill. And Carl says, uh, me? He said, yeah, if you want to come back tomorrow and audition, he says, ooh, this is, this is, uh, you know, going to be a little tricky here. He says, I'm here to play with Keith and Jimmy Goodrow and 
this band that we already started up and up to you. So Carl, you know, laid out the facts in front of me. He says, Glenn would like to audition me like tomorrow. And he says, I'm, I'm going to tell you right up front. He says, I'm, I'm here to, you got me here from Mississippi to play banjo and, uh, and I'll stick to, you know, my word. You know, I'll, I'll stay with you if, if that's what you want. And I, and I said, Carl, I said, opportunities like this don't come along even like once in a lifetime for most people. I said, and, and, and you got the chance of a lifetime. I said, I'll, I'm not going to be a guy that tells you now, nah, you know, forget the end or the audition and, and stick with me. Go do that audition and, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll do fine. And, he he says I was hoping you'd say that you know so we I think it was one of the first hugs that I have ever got he just put his arms around me and he, he was almost in tears he said I was just so afraid that you know that not going to look at it that way and I said get out there you know and uh, make make me proud and he did he 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 had that job held it for many many years and uh, you know that's well documented. Uh, the, the part that he played in the Glenn Campbell show from that point on, right up until practically, I, I guess, uh, Glenn's passing. <laughs> 